Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And today is late August in the Appalachian Mountains. I'm at about 2,700 feet up in elevation. And I'm in a mixed uh, hardwood and softwood forest. I've got some oak trees, a couple of beeches, some pine trees mixed in here. Today, our topic is gonna be the cinnabar chanterelle. It is probably the most beautiful of all the mushrooms in the forest. And today I'm going to talk about how to find it, what it looks like, some stuff about its edibility, and a little bit about its mycorrhizal relationships with the trees around it. So stay tuned for today's episode on the Cinnabar Red Chanterelle. Right here in your backyard. You never know what you're going to find. And here's the make this invasive. It's like it's awesome. It's yours. Dog woods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's... Last year was a particularly amazing year for fungi. I think in this forest around me, I photographed perhaps a hundred different species of fungi. They've been a little bit late this year and really haven't seen too many because it's been pretty dry most of the time. Well, we've had some late afternoon thunderstorms in the last few days and a lot of stuff has popped up. And I'm just fascinated by seeing the variety and the types and the colors and the morphology and shape of so many different mushroom species. So here as I walk along, I'll zoom in and show you some of the things that I found. One of my favorites is this one here that's called Dead Man's Fingers. And it comes, some of them are orangey, some of them are yellow, and I'll just leave it to your imagination why it's called Dead Man's Fingers. But there's so many different kinds of fungi in the Appalachian Mountains. Right now, there's 2,300 known species, and there could be as many as 20,000 species yet to be identified by closer looks and the use of DNA analysis. I'm gonna have to throw my disclaimer in, as always. I'm a general biologist. I love nature, and I love teaching about nature. And one of the things that I find and see, of course, are mushrooms. I am not a practicing forager. I don't have that expertise, and I don't pretend to. If you're gonna eat, uh, if you wanna be a forager, and you wanna eat edible mushrooms, be sure you go with an expert. When you research yourself and you find something, cross-reference, use a whole lot of different sources to do it, but the best thing to do is to go with an expert, get with a local foraging group, get some help, show your mushrooms to them, because a mistake can be deadly. Yes, a mistake can be deadly. Look up Destroying Angel, for example. It is one of the most deadly mushrooms around. And in the Cinnabars, there's some look-alikes. In the Chanterelles, there's some look-alikes. Check out my other videos on the diversity of mushrooms in the Appalachian Mountains. You should also check out my Chanterelle video, as well as my video on jack-o'-lantern mushrooms, which sometimes, by some people, are mistaken for chanterelles, and it's very, very toxic. The cool thing about that one is they're bioluminescent. So as we go, you know, I'll show you some of these cool mushrooms and some of the variety and stuff, and then we'll get down here to the, uh, where I know I saw some cinnabar yesterday, by, alerted to me by its right bright red color. But, Again, Appalachian Mountains, fascinating, fascinating diversity of mushrooms, so many different kinds, and it's just cool to go out after a rain and just walk slowly and look down on the ground, 
maybe stop, become aware of your surroundings, and I promise you're gonna see some really cool fungi. I can't identify all of them, and the more I learn about fungi, it seems the more of them I don't know, because I start to recognize the differences between them. So I hope you enjoy this video, and learning, uh, seeing these mushrooms that I came across just today, and also learning about the cinnabar mushroom. So where can you find cinnabar, red, chanterelle mushrooms? This is the perfect kind of habitat. You can see that there's a mix of hardwoods here. There's oaks, chestnut oaks, red oaks, some red maple, as well as some white pine and some pitch pines. And right along here yesterday, the bright red caught my eye. And let's see if it will catch my eye again, and I can show you some cinnabar chanterelles. And right here on the edge of this bank are some amazing and beautiful cinnabar mushrooms. There's a couple right here. There's one over here. There's a couple over here. And there have been several groups of these scattered around in this area. So right over here is a really nice grouping of cinnabar chanterelle. I can probably count a cluster of five or six there, another cluster of five to ten there, a cluster of ten or twenty right there. So I found a really good spot that has a, a nice layout of these mushrooms. They don't grow tightly packed in groups, they don't grow on wood, and they're growing in the soil. because. These fungi are mycorrhizal fungi. The mycorrhizal fungi grow underneath the ground. They don't grow on wood. They're intertwined with the roots of the hardwood trees around here, particularly oak and beech and possibly the pine as well. And you gotta remember that a fungus is a mass of hypha, which together are called a mycelium that are like hair-like filaments that intertwine and form a web through the soil. The fruiting body, in this case of the cinnabar chanterelle, is what we see above the ground. And it's only there to produce spores and only there for a few days or a few weeks of the year. The rest of the year, those mycelia, the main body of the fungus, is growing intertwined with these tree roots. Why do they do that? It's a mutualistic relationship between the fungi and the trees, where each gives the, the other something. It helps the trees a lot because it increases the surface area of the tree roots for absorption of minerals and water. And in turn, the trees that do photosynthesis can share some carbohydrate food back with these mycelium, back with, in this case, the red cinnabar chanterelle. Other fungi may have their mycelia intertwined in the wood, like these jack-o'-lantern fungi, who by the way can grow in the dark, and they intertwine and break down carbohydrates in the roots by releasing enzymes in the wood of the tree. But these cinnabar mushrooms, the chanterelle mushrooms, don't grow off wood, so that's one of the keys to identifying them. These cinnabar mushrooms have a range of colors I've heard described from uh, flamingo pink to salmon red to autumn red orange. So there's always a big variety in them. I love it when I, I see these really red colors. I think they're just spectacular. These mushrooms are said to have a vase shape and you can see on the top of the mature, mature mushroom, there's like kind of a little indentation in it. If you flip the mushroom over, you can see what's underneath. And these are called false gills. These are not real gills like mushrooms have that release spores. These are known as false gills. And they're more just like ridges as a part of the mass of the mushroom than actual gills that produce and release the spores and stuff. Um, gills, you can typically rub off with your hand and not disturb the structure of the mushroom cap. In this case, these don't rub off. They're more just like little ridges in the surface. We also call these gills uh, decurrent. 
meaning that the gills continue down or at least partway down the stem. And this is another characteristic in general of the chanterelle group, You're looking for these decurrent gills, which means that they extend downward along the sides of the stem. The mushrooms may have a slightly sweet fragrant odor or often no real odor as well. Some people find that the chanterelles they collect, the cinnabar red chanterelles they collect, have a piney, fruity, kind of floral taste to them. And others say it doesn't really have a great taste, but they all like the texture of the mushrooms, particularly sauteed. Remember, I'm personally not a forager. I'm sharing what I learned as I discovered these mushrooms and did research on them. But I'm learning more, and I'm looking forward to spending more time with foragers and learning more about how to find, collect, and eat some of these edible mushrooms that are all around me. The cinnabar red chanterelle gets its red color from a complex cartonoid compound that is produced in its tissues. This compound is a well-known and really great antioxidant. And again, that's what gives it its red color. They also use this particular compound in feed for trout and salmon, as well as poultry. So it has some really good healthy properties to it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature at Your Door on the cinnabar red chanterelles. Fascinating, beautiful little fungus. I was so excited to have found it today. Remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe. I do a wide variety of episodes from everything that you'll find in a forest from trees and flowers and plants and amphibians and snakes and salamanders and insects so i hope you enjoy what i do give me a like and uh, leave a message i love getting messages from my uh, viewers and i try to get back to you as soon as i can if i'm not out in the woods on a multi-day hike i'm hiking the appalachian trail so sometimes i'm i'm away from my desk and away from the internet when I'm doing that. But thanks for watching Nature at Your Door.